Okay, meeting has been recorded. Good afternoon, colleagues, and welcome to our webinar on human on digital humanities. A decade ago, the term digital humanities or DH was unheard of, but now it is found everywhere in the literature, on websites, blogs. Am I audible enough? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Blogs, conference presentations, and even in job descriptions. Digital humanities appears in the latest top 10 trends in academic libraries, alongside research data management and open access. The purpose of this webinar is to start a conversation about digital humanities. During this session, we will look at the definitions of digital humanities, its history, DH projects, tools used, and how some libraries are getting involved. We will be led by Ingrid Thompson, subject librarian in the Humanities Information Division at the University of Cape Town. Over to you, Ingrid. Thanks, Sonelli. I'm going to just switch off your, just, just, just if you can mute your mic. Okay, let me mute it. Okay. Right. Um, I say for the purposes of this conversation, we're going to look at um, um, it. We're going to look at digital humanities, but it's not really about the librarians and what libraries can offer, but rather that bigger picture. But at the end of the session, we will talk a little bit about the role of librarians. So here we go. This is an outline of the can, session. Can I, um, can I disturb you? Hello? Yes. Yes. Colleagues, if, if you have any questions or comments or anything, I suppose you can write it and so that it can be noted. Write it on that message space so that it can be it can be noted. Okay, thank you. Um the history of digital humanities, or DH, as it has become known, is fascinating. It is a lot older than one thinks. But is it the next big thing, as claimed by the Chronicle in 2009? Or it then went to the thing in the same publication in 2011. This seems to be the one area of growth in higher education globally when one looks at the job ads at universities worldwide, the establishment of new digital centers and initiatives worldwide, the enormous grants being made available, with even Google making grants, there doesn't seem to be too much happening here in South Africa currently, but there's a lot of interest. But I'm pretty sure that there are lots of projects going on, just not labeled digital humanities. So if you are aware of digital projects in your institution, perhaps you can make some comments in the text in the text box. You can see what the outline is. Um, I'm going to move on. Um, so what is this thing called digital humanities or DH? There is much debate in the literature about what it means to be a digital humanist, humanitist and around the nature of humanities scholarship. Is it using new digital tools to aid traditional scholarly projects? Is it creating code for collaboratively built tools that enable other scholars to add descriptive metadata to digitized manuscripts? Do you need to know how to code? Questions like where does the new media studies leave off and DH begin? Does it need a theory? Do social media platforms like Twitter trivialize digital uh, DH professional discourse? Much of the discussions do take place on this serves blogs and Twitter. But it is probably best understood as an umbrella term covering a wide range of activities from online preservation and digital mapping to data mining and the use of geographic information systems. I like the idea of it being about using new digital tools to aid traditional scholarly projects. DH is not new. It's been around since at least 1949. The old term is human computing. 
the dig term digital humanities only became part of the academic vocabulary in 2004 when editors John Unsworth and Ray Siemens wrote uh, um, uh, of a monograph called A Companion to Digital Humanities, called it that, in an effort to prevent the field from being viewed as digitization. There's a brilliant book called Debates in the Digital Humanities by Matthew Gold, which actually tells that tale. In his blog, Found History, Tom Scheinfeld comments that the difficulty in defining digital humanities stems from the confusion of what humanities broadly is. People get history, philosophy, literary criticism, but that humanities is far more difficult to pin down. Timothy Lepsick, in his DH column on EduHacker, well worth following, talks about the introductory DH course he is teaching to undergraduates at his college. The purpose of the course to, is to expose his students to the many different ways digital humanities scholarship is done, to let them see the paths other people have taken. He comments that it is people on the outside who use the label DH to describe the technological encroachment. He argues that you really sh shouldn't differentiate between digital humanities and humanities. His students just are just seeing the technology just as another tool to be used. Guest speakers that they've had are all humanities scholars using digital tools to help them in their tasks. They all say um, that there was a, a moment of asking, can I use this technology to further my research? Or saying, this is what I want to do and identifies the technology to help them do just that, or in some cases, create a tool to do this, just that. This is backed by a comment by Jennifer Adams and Kevin Gunn in an article in College and Research Libraries News, where they spoke about the application of technology to a task which would have taken researchers years to complete manually, has opened the door for a new approach to humanities research. Eric Lees Morgan from the University of Notre Dame, in a blog posting earlier on this year, described digital humanities work as the practice where digitized content of the humanist is quantitatively analyzed as if it were the content studies by a scientist. This sort of analysis can be done against any sort of human expression. Invariably, the process begins with counting and tabulating. This leads to measurement, which in turn provides opportunity for comparison. And from here, patterns can be observed and anomalies perceived. And finally, predictions and theses and judgments can be articulated. But still, what is digital humanities? It does depend on who you ask. Here are some of the definitions provided by the 2014 participants in the Day of a Life of Digital Humanities. 8th of, the, 8th of April is, that, is, that, is the, known as the day. It's an open community publication project that brings together scholars interested in DH from around the world to document what they do on one day and anyone who considers themselves as being part of the DH community by any definition is invited to participate, write, share, and comment. I'm just going to give you time to actually read that. Um, Ilana, is the sound better now? Essentially, DH can be understood as the place where traditional humanities research methodologies and media digital technologies intersect. Keep this statement in mind when we talk about the role and the contributions that librarians can play. And perhaps this is a pointer to a further webinar discussion on the South African librarians' involvement in DH.
Right, so where did it all start? Here's the man who is considered the father of digital humanities, Padre Roberto Busso, an Italian Jesuit who worked on a punch card concordance of the works of Thomas Aquinas in 1949. He had thought that he would have a file of 13 million of these cards, one for each word, with a context of 12 lines stamped on the back. He imagined that a machine might be able to help him. So having heard of computers, approached IBM and persuaded them to assist him. The entire texts were gradually transferred to punch cards and a concordance program written for the project. The first printed volume was published in 1974 and eventually there were 56 volumes. A CD-ROM version appeared in 1992 which contained some hypertextual features and was accompanied by a user guide in Latin, English and Italian. 2005 saw a web-based version of the index Thomas Cook, to, I can't, to, Tom, Tom, Thomas Ticus. There is an English version on the web as well. So that was the very first one. The narrative of DH development goes something like this. Those four, roughly divided into those four threads. 1949 to 1970 revolved around DH in computer centers with the work done by Padre, Padre Busso getting IBM on board. Let me just try and adjust this mic. It may, might well be my, my mic. Okay. Um, 1966, at the University of Tübingen, Willem Ott develops the pioneering TASSIP program for processing text data in the humanities. 1963 saw the founding of the Center for Literary and Linguistic Computing at Cambridge by Roy Wisby to support his work with early Middle High German texts. 1966 saw the founding of the journal Computers in the Humanities. Um, 1970, in fact, saw the first conference at Cambridge, which eventually led to the founding of the Association for Literary and Linguistic Computing in 1973. 1978 saw the founding of the Association for Computers and Humanities, and 1985 saw the Perseus Project started at Harvard, 1986, the first publication of the journal Literary and Linguistic Computing and the development of the standard general markup language. 1987, saw the text coding, the development of the text encoding initiative, um, culminating in that, in that first edition of the TEI guidelines for electronic text coding and interchange, which is still the format used to still use today and 1991 saw the electronic Beowulf project started. Think about all of this against the backdrops of developments in computers and the internet and what the effect was. Um, how is the sound now? If someone could comment. Libraries involvement started as far back as 1992 with the eText Center one of the first digital repositories to build and maintain an internet accessible collection of documents central to teaching and research in humanities and to nurture a community adept at the creating and scholarly use of these materials, starting at Virginia by the library and it currently falls under their digital curation services. Um, Another screenshot, that is the Digital Library Program, which was founded in 1996 at the University of Michigan. And that year also saw the, fi saw the founding of the Schoenberg Center for Electronic Text and Images by the University of Penn Libraries. And from here it snowballed, went mainstream. 
Digital Humanities Centers now exist in many libraries, especially in the US, where they provide a range of services, sometimes very similar to computing labs, while in other places they are like a small campus-wide department staffed with scholars, researchers, and students. I want to refer you to the spec kit on digital humanities published by ARL, which gives the results of a survey looking at digital scholarship centers or services that support the humanities. 2004 saw the publication of the Blackwell Companion to Digital Humanities, which was where the first time that the term digital humanities was coined. And from there, it, it, it spiraled. So what do some of the um, digital humanitists actually do? Um, these are some of the points to be considered. They come from a presentation given by Nancy LeMay at the University of Ottawa to graduate students and academics in a talk she gave about DH support and services from the library. Um, so some of the some of the, the the, the researchers are looking at researching DH impact on the humanities, looking at how to embed technology into pedagogy, project management, studying large collections of text, numeric data, doing data visualization, and then digital content creation. Some thoughts about DH projects. Again, what kind of knowledge can digital humanity scholars produce that their predecessors couldn't? Um, one of the principal projects was about making historical and literary, literary, literary texts available online. And then there's the data mining and the text encoding projects that are often paired with interesting visual representations multimedia and interactive tools. This is a comprehensive list of DH tools at, at Bamboo DIRT. DIRT stands for Digital Research Tools, which provides a list of resources for DHs. There are all kinds of interesting tools and technologies which in the end will become the norm. Hey, no one talks about word processors and computers anymore. Repositories like DSpace, Fedora, Digitool, tools for displaying and publishing one's projects like Greenstone, Omeka, Zotero, etc. are all listed there. So types of what I'm going to show you now are some examples which are with what has been done with some of the tools. All the links are on the last two slides of this presentation. Um, so these are the types of analysis that, 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 that one can actually do with DH. Um, the, um, I'm, and I'm going to give you some screenshots. Network analysis. Timothy Lepsik created a visualization of the Hobbit, the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers, and the Return of the King by using Google, Google's fusion tables and the new network graph feature. And you can see what it, what, what, what it looks like. Um, there's data visualization, where you use data to, you, you visualize data to tell a story, to under, understand, identify trends, make connections, see great patterns. I'm going to show you a screenshot of mapping the Republic of Letters, which is quite interesting. And they used a tool called Palladio to do that. Text analysis. These are two free text analysis platforms. Um, I am going to touch on something on the Old Bailey proceedings just now. But coming out of the Old Bailey proceedings was a collaboration project between the University of Sheffield and Hertfordshire, George Mason University, University of Western Ontario, and University of Alberta, which has integrated Old Bailey Online, Zotero, and Voyant tools, which allow researchers to study the, what is it, the one comma the 127 million words of trial text. And they have created a standalone prototype of data 
warehousing which allows for the production of visualizations from the day, trial data. There's another example of, of text analysis which appears in a book called Microanalysis, Digital Methods and Literary History by Matthew Jockers is a study which showed that Jane Austen and Sir Walter Scott had the greatest effect on other authors in terms of writing styles and themes. Matthews based his study on the analysis of 3,592 works published from 1780 to 1990 using digital analysis. And in the recent news is that, that UCLA has announced a free smartphone text analysis app called Text Textil, which you can use to do the same to do the same thing. GIS. Um, may I just wish all the GIS librarians out there a uh, um, ha happy International GIS Day, which is today. Um, this is something called Time Mapper, um, which is worth going to explore. And then the other the other aspect is digital exhibits. I've just put a screenshot up of the digital exhibits from UCT Libraries. Just going to show you some of these some of the DH projects that are on the go that you might not realize are DH projects. Um, Charles Darwin's library, for example, is a digital edition and virtual reconstruction of the surviving books owned by Charles Darwin. Um, the interesting bits in the the chief interests in those books are lies in those pencil notes scribbled on their pages and the written on scraps of papers and pinned to the last page. So with the digitization of the books comes the ability to retrace and, and reduplicate Darwin's readings. This particular theme um, um, project, Mapping the Republic of Letters, looks at early modern scholarship when the world of scholarship relied on its own networks, which were the lifelines of learning, facilitating the dissemination and criticism of ideas, spread of political news, and as well as the circulation of people and objects. First World War Poetry Digital Archive. Um, there are over 7,000 items of text, images, audio, and video um, for, for use. It's not just related to to um, text, but also to to ar to visual archives. So here's an example: the show of visual archives, transatlantic slavery, slave trade, Kindred Britain, which is a network of nearly thirty thousand individuals, many of them iconic figures in British culture who are connected through family relationships of blood, marriage, or affiliation. Um, and this is the online, online Old Bailey online proceedings. As you will recall, I, I spoke about those earlier. Right, something very useful. There are quite a number of libguides out there on, on digital humanities. Um, and this this one from Boston College actually is a very useful list of digital humanities centers and organizations. Um, the Alliance of Digital Humanities Organizations is a key organization in the field. It's an international umbrella body of a number of organizations hosts a number of key journals, the Journal of Digital Scholarship in the Humanities, Digital Scholarship, um, Digital Humanities Quarterly, um, Digital Humanities, Sum then Institutes and Training, so the Digital Humanities Summer Institute, which apparent is a week-long boot camp at the University of Victoria in Canada, and it sponsors the annual joint conference um, I was told by somebody in the in the um, in in digital humanities that their annual conference was the conference to go to. It takes place in Sydney next year. 
the other the other aspect is is um, something called that camp which stands for the humanities and technology camp which is an unconference it's an open inexpensive meeting where humanists and technologists of all skill levels learn and build together in sessions proposed on the spot I've not actually heard of one happening here in South Africa, but they certainly have happened elsewhere in the world. This is a snapshot of the website Digital Humanities at Oxford, which includes a list of past and ongoing projects. They've just appointed a Digital Humanities Champion for the University, who will play a key role in developing an and implementing the cross-university digital humanities strategy. Right, I'm just going to point out this is the the DH pro DH at UCT, the DH projects here. Although they're not actually called digital humanities projects, there is in fact a grant that can be applied for called the Humanitech grant for digitizing of collections. What happens is the library's cataloging and digitizing department advise on, on, on metadata. I made reference to the spec kit on digital humanities, which gives the results of a survey looking at digital scholarship centers or services in libraries that support the humanities. The survey showed that library based support then, and this was in 2011, was offered predominantly on an ad hoc basis, but that as the demand for services supporting DH has grown, so libraries were re-evaluating their, their, their provisional services and staffing models. A number of research libraries are hosting dedicated digital humanities centre. The survey showed that metadata librarians, archivists, special collections librarians, preservation specialists and subject librarians were routinely called upon to support DH project teams. The comment was made that not only do we need novel skill sets or new, new skill sets, but that we also need to rely on our traditional skills. In the core report, that's the Joint Task Force on Librarians' Competencies in Support of E-Research and Scholarly Communication, it was commented that the engagement with digital humanities is an evolving specialization in librarianship, which requires a combination of strong, a strong academic background in the arts and humanities, technical grounding of technology in technologies and tools to support the computational models of research and teaching in humanities and project management. The role has other components as well, such as advisor, advocate, and partner for special collection um, curators. I'm just going to show these are some of the some of the competencies that that they had identified: um, the subject and main knowledge which included academic subject expertise, understanding of the research process, awareness of trends in digital humanities scholarship, knowledge of the ways that new technologies affect the production of scholarship in humanities. Um, you needed to know about you need to know about librarianship and scholarly communication as as well as something about data curation and management. The technical skills it's a range. It's it's the techie stuff. It's knowing how to use Zotero, Omeka, and Omeka, and and so on. Project management. Uh, that sort of goes go, goes without saying. Partnerships and collaborations. They were talking about where the digital humanities represents the library to stakeholders, both internal and external, and then some sort of teaching and training to library staff as well as to as well as to students. Um, this is the um, Hesburgh Library Centre for Digital Scholarship at the University of Notre Dame. Just as by way of an example. They support services around GIS, data management, statistical analysis of data, and text mining. The space includes computers, scanners, printers, 3D printers, and collaborative 
book, um, Collaborative Workspace. In that blog posting that I referred to earlier on, Eric Lees Morgan lists some of the projects to give readers a taste of the type of work that he is involved in in the center. And finally, I want to just show you this. I, I hope it's going to work. It's, it's, from, it's, it's um, a digital humanities thesis described in two minutes. I'm going to click on the, click on the link and hopefully it'll all show up the way it should. Is it showing? Okay, give it a... Right. If you if you don't see it, I'm going to post the slides, and you can then go on and have a look. It's it's a very good description of what digital humanities is, and that is probably it from me. The use there's a list of useful reads and links. Some of the links that I have mentioned in the in the present in the webinar. Um. Any questions, comments?
Thank you, Ingrid. Uh, colleagues, if you have any questions or comments, please type it there. Are there any DH projects going on in your in your institutions that perhaps aren't being called DH projects, but actually meet the criteria? Are any of you involved at all in 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 DH projects or or something similar in your in your institutions? I'm not sure that online theses would 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 be part of it. I am when you, you look back and you look at some of the DH. I mean, when I look at some of the DH projects that ha have been going on here at UCT, I'm going to give you one or two examples. Um, I can find my notes. Um, We've got the Percival Kirby collection of musical instruments, which was photographed by a student hired by the College of Music, and in, cons and in, in consultation with the library's digitization unit. And then metadata was added by a College of Music staff member who consulted the library's cataloging department for guidance, for example. Yeah, Sonovia, you're probably right. Um, if you would like to speak, um, the, you'll see that there's a little man at the top with these. Um, um, you can sort of raise your hand there, and we'll give you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the. If you've got a mic, I will enable your microphone, and then you may talk. Sonovia, you, no, you, the mic should be live for you. Okay, so Nivea, you do have the mic. If you have a mic.
Oh. Well, there was silence. <laughs> Can you hear now? Are there any other comments? No, I'm not hearing I'm not hearing you at all. Okay, Sinelli, do you want to um, make the few closing remarks? Um, oh, okay. I, I was still. I, I saw that Richard was typing something. I thought it was a question. No, it, it's not. Okay. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you so much. You've given light to some of us who were just so in the dark. And I suppose we can take this back to our institutions and probably follow the UCT because. I hope when we start with this project in our own institutions, you will be able to assist us if we call for help. Um, it's all new to me too. It's it's very much new. <laughs> so it's a learning it's a learning curve for all of us. Oh, but still, at least you have some information. Yes. But thank you so much. You've seriously like shed the light i suppose all of us here are really really gained something and we will be able to to to, to take it back to our institute. thank you thank you it was a conversation starter yes. thanks <laughs> hi colleagues do you still want to say something <laughs> No, I'm going to, I see Andiswa is typing, I'll let, let her finish there and then I will shut down and stop the recording <laughs> and then link, send, then send everyone the recording. Anna Marie, oh, it's, oh, it's just thank yous now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs>